from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE. Covering Activio 2019 Data Driven. Brought to you by Activio. Welcome to Boston, everybody. This is Dave Vellante, and I'm here with Stu Miniman. Finally, Stu, in our hometown. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage, and we're covering Actifio, data-driven, hashtag data-driven 19. Actifio is a company that is focused, started focused on copy data management. They sort of popularized the term, the, the concept, the idea of data virtualization. Of course, big data, digital transformation, all the buzz. It's kind of been a tailwind for the company, and we followed them quite closely over the years. Holly St. Clair is here. She's the CDO of the state of Massachusetts, that's Chief Dig and Chief Data Officer. Holly, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for having me. So it's kind of rare that somebody shares the title of Chief Digital Officer and Chief Data Officer. Um, I think it's rare right now. I think that will change. You think it will change? Yeah. You think those two roles will come together? I just think data f fuels our digital world and uh, it both creates the content and also monitors how we're doing. And it's just inevitably, I think either they're going to be joined at the hip or it's going to be the same person. You know, that's interesting. I always thought the chief data officer sort of emerged from this wonky back office role, data quality, and then Be sort careful of, of the word wonky. Okay, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah let's talk about that. But the chief <laughs> digital officer is kind of the mover, the shaker, has a little marketing gene in her, but, but, but okay, so you see those two roles coming together and that maybe makes sense because why? Because there, there's there some tension in a lot of organizations between those two roles? Or? Well, I think uh, the challenge with uh, the way that sometimes people think about data is they think about it as only a technical process. Data is actually very creative, and you also have to tell a story in order to be good with it. Mm. It's the same thing as marketing, but it's just a little bit of a different hue, a different type of audience, a different type of pace. There is a technical component to the data work, but I'm lucky enough in my organization that I'm surrounded by additional technical folks, CTO, CSO, privacy officer, CIO. So we have a lot of supports that might take away some of those roles that are scrunched in under the data officer or the digital officer. So I used the term wonky before, it kind of triggered you a little bit, but, but you're a <laughs> modeler, you're a data scientist, you're a de programmer, right? No, Coder, but I know, enough to, I know enough to read code and get in trouble. So, okay, yeah. uh, so you can direct coders, and you have data scientists working for you. Yes. Right. Yeah. So you've got that entire organization underneath you, and your your mission is blank. Fill in the blank. So our mission is to use the best information technology to ensure that every user's experience with the Commonwealth is fast, easy, and wicked awesome. <laughs> That, that's Wicked awesome, awesome. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Holly, uh, our team just got back from a very large public sector event down in DC and digging into you know, how are agencies doing with you know, cloud first initiatives, how are they doing in the city environments. You work for the state of Massachusetts and you know, rolled out that, that first chief data, chief digital officer. Give us a little bit of insight inside how Massachusetts is doing with these latest waves of innovation. Uh, well, you know, we have our legacy systems, and as our opportunities come up to improve those systems or reinvest in them, we are taking a step forward to cloud. Um, we're not so dogmatic that it's cloud only, but it's definitely cloud when it's appropriate. I do think we'll always have some on-prem services, but really when it's possible, whether it's a SaaS service off the shelf or it's a cloud environment, if it makes sense, then we are moving to that. You, you, in your keynote this morning, uh, you, you talked about something called data minimalism. Yes. And I wonder if you could explain that for our audience because for the longest time, it's been, well, you want to hoard all the data, you want to get all the data, and then well, you know, what do you do with it? How do you manage it? You get buried by the data. Right, right. I mean, data is only as good as your ability to use it. And I often find that we're ingesting all this data and we don't really know what to do with it, or really rather our business leaders and decision makers can't quite figure out how to connect that to the mission or to at properly interrogate the data to get the information they want. Um, and so this idea is an idea that's sort of coming a little bit out of Europe and or some of the other trends we see around some of the cybersecurity and hacking um, worlds. And the idea is, this actually came from Fjord's Digital Trends for 2019, is data minimalism. The idea is that you strongly connect your business objectives to the data collection program that you have. You don't just collect data until you're sure that it supports your objectives. So, you know, one of the things that I also talked about in the keynote was not just data minimalism, but doing a try, test, iterate approach. We often collect data hoping to see that we can create a change. I think we need to prove that we can create the change before we do a widespread, scalable data collection program. 
uh, because often we collect data and you still can't see what you're doing has an effect within the data. The signal's too strong or too too weak, or you're asking the wrong question of the data, or it's the wrong collect collection technique. And, and that's largely driven from a sort of privacy angle. Is that right? Or a privacy privacy. The reality of how costly sometimes it can be. For, you know, storage of data is cheap, but the actual reality of moving it and saving it and knowing where it is and accessing it later, that takes time and energy of your of your actual people. Um, so I think it's just important for us to think carefully about our resources. In government, we have a little less resources sometimes than the private sector, so we're very strategic on what we do. Uh, and so I think we need to really think about the data we use. And I wonder if, if the pendulum is swinging. Remember, back to the days of you know 2006, the federal rules of civil procedure said, okay, you got to keep electronic records for whatever, seven years, or depending on the industry. And people said, okay, let's get rid of it as soon as we can. Data was viewed as a, as a liability. And then, of course, all the big data hype, you talked about it a little bit in your, in your speech. Um, everybody said, okay, collect everything, throw it into a data lake, and we all know those became data swamps. So do you feel like the pendulum is swinging and there's maybe a little balance? Are we reaching an equilibrium? Is it going to be a you know, hard shift back to data as a, as, a, as a liability? What are your thoughts? Well, I think as with any trend, there's always a little bit of a pendulum swing as we're learning to what the, what the equilibrium, is. equilibrium is. I think that's a great word. I think the piece that I neglected to mention is the relationship to the consumer trust. You know, for us in government, we have to have the trust of our constituents. We do have a higher bar than public sector in terms of handling data in a way that's respectful of individuals' privacy and their security of their data. Uh, and so I think to the extent that um, we are able to lend transparency and show the utility of the data we're using, that will gain the trust of our users or customers. Uh, but if we continue to do things behind the scenes and not be overt about it, I think then that can cause more problems. I think we're going to be faced as organizations to ask ourselves, is having more data worth the sort of um, vulnerability it introduces and the possible liability of trust of our, of our customers? When you betray the trust of your customers, it's really hard to replace that. And so, you know, to a certain extent, I think we should be more deliberate about our data and, and earn the trust of our customers right. ongoing. Holly, how does Massachusetts look at the, the boundary of data between the, the public sector and the private sector? Uh, I've talked to, you know, some states where, you know, we're helping to solve parking by giving, you know, new mobile apps access to that information. You talked a little bit about healthcare. You know, I've done interviews with the Mass Open Cloud Initiative, uh, you know, here locally. You know, how, how do you look at that balance of sharing data? I think it is a real balance. Uh, you know, I don't think we do very much of it yet, and um, we certainly don't um, share data that we're not allowed to by law, and we have very strict laws here in Massachusetts, stricter than, than most states. Uh, and so I think it's very strategic when we do share data. Um, we are looking for opportunities when we can. When I talk about demand-driven data, uh, I look forward to opening the conversation a little bit to ask people what data are they looking for, to ask businesses uh, and um, different institutions we have throughout the Commonwealth, what data would help you do your job better and grow our economy and our jobs? And I think that's a conversation we need to have over time to figure out what the right balance is. Uh, some data will be easier for us to share than others, um, and some we will never be able to share. The first data scientist I ever met uh, was somebody I interviewed, the amazing Hillary Mason. And she said something that, I want to circle back to something you said in your talk, is she said the hardest part of my job, or one of the hardest parts, is, is people come to me with data, and, and it's the most valuable thing I can do is sh ask, show them which questions to ask. That's right. And, and you had talked about, well, it's a lot of times you don't know what questions to ask until you look at the data or vice versa. What comes first, the chicken or the egg? What's your experience been? Well, I do think we need to be driven by the business uh, objectives and goals. Um, it doesn't mean there's not an iterative process in there somewhere. But, you know, Data wonks, we can we can just throw data all day long and still might not give you the answer you're Careful looking with for. That word. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think it's really important for us to be driven by the business. And um, I think executives don't know how to ask the questions of the data. They don't know how to interrogate it. Or honestly, re more re uh, realistically, we don't have the data that actually answers the question they want to know. So we often have to use proxies for that information. Um, but I do think it is iterative after you get to a starting point. So I do think knowing what the business question is first. I know you got to go, uh, but I want to ask you a last question, bring it back to the state. We're both Massachusetts residents and we use your services. It sounds like you're picking off some, some good wins with a, with a fast ROI. I mean, you, you mentioned you know, driver's license renewals, et cetera. 
how about procurement? Has procurement been a challenge uh, for, from the, the state standpoint? Are you, are you looking at sort of the digital process and how to streamline procurement? That is a, a conversation that um, Secretary Wood is currently in, and I think it's a good one. Uh, I don't think we have any uh, any solutions yet, but I think we have a lot of issues that we're struggling with, but we're not alone. All public sectors struggling with this type of procurement question. Um, so we're working on it. All right, last question is uh, quick thoughts on you know what you've seen here. I know you're in and out, but um, data driven, good theme. Yeah, it's a great theme. It's a really exciting agenda. There's people from all these different organizations and approaches to data driven. Um, you know, from movie executives and casting to uh, airline. It was just really exciting to see the program. Holly St. Clair, thanks so much great. for coming on the Cube. Thank you. Appreciate having you. Great to meet you. Okay, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this short break. We're the Cube is here at Data Driven Day One special coverage. We'll be right back. <laughs>